This is the first example video from Physics 125, Chapter 1. And in these example videos, we are going to go through the step-by-step -step problem solving process that we really want to train ourselves to do, even if things are making sense to us right away. Uh, because as problems get harder, or we're presented with a slightly different problem that should be using the same process, if we haven't been practicing all the steps and have been trying to cut corners, then we may get stuck um, making the same mistakes that we would have confronted using this process. So in this first example, we have that a painter can paint 4.5 square feet in one minute. How many square meters can they paint in one hour? With the train tracks unit conversion method, one of the things that we always want to do is we want to say what we start with. So we have 4.5 square feet. So that's the unit of feet are squared. And because that's happening every minute, that is per minute. So right away we realize that there's a couple of things we want to make sure that we recognize in the wording of these kinds of problems. Especially with times, there are often going to be rates. How fast can you do something or how much can you do something in a certain amount of time? And that typically means that we can write the unit as something per a time unit. With the problem solving method, we also always want to write what we're looking for, our target. So we're being asked to find square meters in one hour. That means that the unit we want is square meters per hour. The reason why it can be really useful to write out these initial steps, even if these problems are making sense, is that way your work has context and is useful and meaningful to you when you review it in preparation for a quiz or a test. So with the train tracks method, the thing that we start with becomes the beginning of a set of train tracks. And I'm going to write out feet squared as feet times feet, because that's really useful to get into the habit of recognizing that the word square has really important meaning. And because it's happening each minute, minute shows up on the bottom of the train tracks. So already, there are ways for students to make mistakes in this first step. If you only write feet once instead of twice, or you ignore the squared aspect of it, that's a huge physics mistake and not just a simple math mistake. And if you put the minutes up in the top part of the train tracks, then when you're trying to cancel out units that show up in equal amounts on the top and the bottom, it will be in the wrong spot and you will end up with conversion factors that are going in backwards or upside down. Okay, now when we have two different types of units, we can get rid of them in either order. I'm going to go ahead and deal with the minutes right now. Minutes show up on the bottom, so we need it to show up on the top. Since we can see that our target is an hour, then we can say that 60 minutes is equal to one hour, and that becomes our conversion factor that we're adding onto these train tracks. All right. Now, as we go along, it can be really, really useful to be keeping track of these units by crossing them out as we go. I'm going to switch colors so I can cross out the units that are showing up in equal amounts on the top and the bottom. And because we knew we wanted hours, we can circle that to remind ourselves that that unit is a final unit and we don't want to do anything else different with it. Okay, so now we continue. We have feet and we want meters, and so we can look up the conversion factor, 3.281 feet is equal to one meter, and so that's a conversion factor that can go into the train tracks. If we're doing these um, crossing out as we go, we look and this 
cancels with one of the two um, feet units, but we still have a second one here. We are not finished the problem, and that's one of the most common mistakes that we see students make with these problems, is ignoring when there is multiple of the same unit. And so the only thing we have to do is add this again, Three point two eight one feet is equal to one meter. Okay, we go back to crossing off the units. So feet shows up again on the top once and the bottom once, so that both feet units on top cancel both feet units on the bottom. We see that we want meters squared, which means the fact that we have two on top here is a good thing. We can circle those to remind ourselves that we're done. And now we see that the problem itself is finished with all of the setup. So the last part is the calculation part, where we take everything that was on top, 4.5 times 60 times 1 times 1, but I won't write that out, and everything on the bottom, 1 times 3.281 times 3.281. One. Okay, so the key to remember for the calculation part of this is that we do need the parentheses around the bottom, otherwise your calculator will do something that it is, um, that you are not expecting it to. And our calculator tells us that it's 25.0813728. We never really want to write out that many decimal places. In lab, we talk a lot about significant figures, and it is a really important process when we are taking measurements ourselves. In this class, during the lecture portion, one thing that we can do to make sure that we are focusing on the new physics skills and we are not bogging ourselves down with too much worry about how the um, significant figures part pl plays a role, is we can always default to three significant figures and we'll be, we'll be just fine um, in terms of a reasonable answer. Certainly if we think about the way that um, significant figures rules will be presented to us, because our problem started with a number that had two significant figures, rounding this to 25 would also be perfectly reasonable but something that the textbook mentions even in the introduction itself and that we will continue to use throughout the semester is that a default choice of three significant figures when we're reporting our final answers is perfectly reasonable unless there's something specifically asked for otherwise. That's all we have for this example. There are three more in chapter one, so stick around for those and I will see you in the next videos.